Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice polynomial equation. So even though the thumbnail doesn't indicate this is a polynomial, hopefully you understand from p of x that this should be a polynomial. And also the title tells you that. So p of x plus 1 minus p of x is equal to x. And we also know that p of 2 is equal to 7. So what is the question? We're going to be solving for p of x. So we're going to find an expression for p of x. Now, with polynomials, there's a couple important things to consider, especially when you have a polynomial equation. And that is the degree of the polynomial. For example, if you have a constant polynomial, then it's going to look like this. p of x is going to be a constant like c, or 1, 2, negative 5, whatever. If p of x is linear, then it's going to be like this, x plus 3. If it's quadratic, it's going to be 2x squared minus 7x plus 5. And if it's cubic, it's going to have x cubed, so on and so forth. So we do need to know the degree of this polynomial because there are infinitely many polynomials. And without knowing that, without having a boundary, you know, we're just going to be looking forever. So that's the very first thing we're going to do. And then I'll split up uh, my methods into two. I'll present two methods. Okay, let's get started. So what kind of polynomial are we looking at if their difference is x? So think about it this way. If p of x is constant, then p of x plus 1 is also going to be constant, and the difference of the same numbers will be 0. There's no way you can get an x. If p of x is linear, like p of x equals x or 3x, let's say, then p of x plus 1 is just going to be 3x plus 3. You're going to replace x with x plus 1. And then th their difference is going to be a constant, not x. Hmm. When the polynomials are constant, their difference is 0. When they are linear, their difference is a constant. We want their difference to be linear. So the polynomials have to be quadratic. And I'm also going to show you with my first method why it's quadratic. We'll have a better idea. But that is going to be my assumption at this point. So if p of x is quadratic, what, why does that matter, right? Well, let's just go ahead and plug in some values. So first method. The first method basically deals with substitution a lot, right? And substitution is fun, isn't it? Replace x with 2. You get p of 3 minus p of 2 equals 2. Now we know that p of 2 is 7. From here we get p of 3 equals 9. Great, let's go ahead and write it down here so we can keep it together. And then I'm going to replace x with 3. That's going to give me p of 4 minus p of 3 equals 3. And we know that p of 3 is equal to 9, so that gives us p of 4 equals 12. Normally, three equations would be, or three values would be good enough for quadratic because we can just go ahead and set up a system, so on and so forth. But I want to show you something that's really cool. That's why I want to use one more value. So bear with me. x equals 4 gives you p of 5 minus p of 4 equals 4. We know that p of 4 is equal to 12, so p of 5 must be 16. Let's go ahead and write that down as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a table with these values. Okay, We got four values, one given, three we found. Let's go ahead and put it together. Let's make a table, an XY table, and some people call it a T table. Yeah, no, not the one that you drink tea on, but anyways, that's another thing. Two, three, four, and five, right? That's what I used for X values. And then I got nine, 12, 16. Maybe you already got the idea, maybe what I'm about to show you is really cool. Now, what do you know about linear functions? When you have a linear function, let's say something like this, one, two, three, and you have 5, 7, and 9. You notice that the differences are constant. These are called first differences. With quadratic functions, the second differences are constant. That's, isn't that awesome? Anyway, let's just look at these. The differences are 2, 3, and 4. And if you look at the second differences, they are going to be constant. That's what makes this a quadratic. Of course, if if it's a polynomial, then it's quadratic, but it was already given that it's a polynomial. So 
to keep a long story short, I know I talk a lot and some people complain about it, but I just wanted to give you a good background and I think this is important information. P of X must be quadratic. Awesome. What is that supposed to mean then? Well, it means you can write P of X as AX squared plus BX plus C. But we have all these data points, so we can use three of them to come up with a system of equations. Let's do it real quick. P of 2 is going to be 4A plus 2B, or not 2B, of course, equals 7. P of 3 is going to be 9A plus 3B plus C equals 9. And finally, P of 4 equals 16A plus 4B plus C, and that's equal to 12. Awesome. Now we got a system of equations. You can easily solve this, shouldn't take too long. But think about it. C is going to cancel out. Like if you subtract this way, C is going to cancel out. You're going to end up with 5A plus B equals 2. If you subtract this way, C cancels out. You're going to end up with 7A plus B is equal to 3. And then from here, if you subtract this way, B is going to cancel out. And you're going to end up with 2A equals 1, which implies A equals 1 half. Awesome, right? And if you plug in 1 half, you're going to get 5 halves, 4 halves, negative 1 half, and that's the value of B. What about C? I don't know, but we can find out because P of X is AX squared plus, I mean, minus BX, right, which is 1 half plus C. We also know that, well, we got it several data points, but let's go ahead and use the given one. P of 2 is 7, right? So let's go ahead and replace X with 2. And that's going to give us 2 squared, 4, half of 4 is 2, minus 1 plus C is equal to 7. This means C is equal to 6. Awesome. Go ahead and back substitute, and you're good to go. So P of X can be written as 1 half of X squared minus half of X plus 6. And that brings us to the end of the first method. Because we still got to do the second method. You have some patience. Let's continue. Second method is actually a little nicer in my opinion, but please let me know what you think. We already know P must be quadratic, right? So why not write P as AX squared plus BX plus C right away? And without looking at the data values, we don't care. Let's just plug it in. P of X plus one is gonna be A times X plus one squared plus B times X plus one plus C. And from this subtract P of X and cancel out the C and subtract these and subtract those. You end up with a times 2x plus 1 because x squared cancels out. b times 1, just b, <laughs> equals x. Remember, our expression was equal to x, right? Yay. Awesome. Now, we can do the following. 2ax plus a plus b equals x. The coefficient of x must be, the coefficient, <laughs> must be 1, which means a is 1 half. Constant term must be zero. That means B equals negative one half. And if you plug in the value of the P of two, you're gonna get C is equal to six. And this gives you the same result as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.